In this video, we'll be learning about the probabilities of continuous variables. But before we talk about this, we will review discrete variables so we can understand the difference between these two concepts. And in order to bring everything together, we will briefly talk about some of the concepts we learned in the previous videos, so if you haven't watched those videos yet, I recommend that you do. So let's get started. Discrete variables are variables that can only take on a countable number of values. Examples of discrete variables include the number of heads when flipping a coin, the number of blue marbles drawn from a box, or a student's grade on a test. All of these variables are restricted to being countable. If you were in a neighborhood doing a survey to see how many kids are in each family, you wouldn't ask them if they have half a kid or 0.73 of a kid because it doesn't make sense. Instead, you would ask them how many kids they have, and the answers you would expect could range between 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4 kids, and so on and so forth because we are dealing with countable numbers. Since we are working with countable numbers that make sense with respect to the variable we are gathering information about, we know that this is a discrete variable. This is not to say that countable numbers are only restricted to whole numbers, because they aren't. For example, the amount of money in your bank account or your score on a test are discrete variables that involve countable numbers. You could have $420.69 in your bank account, and you could have scored 5 out of 10 on your most recent math test. Since these are countable or finite numbers, we can say that these variables are discrete variables. In contrast, continuous variables are variables that can take on any numerical value. The data for continuous variables are obtained by measuring rather than counting. Because of this, continuous variables can take on any numerical value within any given range, and is therefore infinite and uncountable. Examples of continuous variables include weight, age, temperature, and distance. To put this into perspective, if you are measuring the age of people in a given sample, you could get many different data values. Some individuals might be 23 years old, others might be 69 years old, or even 420 years old. However, upon closer inspection you might find that the 23 year old is actually 23 and a half, or 23 years and 6 months old. And on even closer inspection you may find that they are 23 years, 6 months, 2 days, 3 seconds, 8 milliseconds, 1 nanosecond, 32 picoseconds, and so on and so forth. You can see how this can go on to infinity and is impossible to count. The same thing can be seen when measuring weight. A person can weigh 150 pounds, but on closer inspection they can also be measured to be 150.305482 and so on and so forth. Because you can measure up to any decimal point, the possibilities are endless and that is why we say continuous variables are uncountable. In statistics, the probability distribution of discrete random variables and continuous random variables are presented differently. One can be presented using a bar chart and the other can be presented using a histogram. In a bar chart, elements are shown as individual entities and each of these entities show us different possible outcomes in a sample space. For example, if you flipped 4 coins repeatedly, you can choose to tally how many times you got heads. Essentially, bar charts allow us to chart countable outcomes. It's worth noting that we typically draw bar graphs with gaps in between each bar to show that there isn't any continuity. In contrast, histograms have no gaps between each bar, and this is to reflect the continuity of the data. This means we can measure any data value and be able to plot that anywhere on the histogram. As mentioned before, continuous random variables have an unlimited number of outcomes, so it's important that we account for this. If you remember from our previous videos, we can also represent continuous random variables using something called a density curve. It's important to note that the probability formulas used for each type of variable are different. If you remember from my previous videos, you would know that when we are working with the probabilities of discrete random variables, we can use all of these probability formulas that we talked about. On the other hand, when we work with the probabilities of continuous random variables, we can use the formulas that we used for calculating density curves. This is because the area under a density curve can represent the probability or proportion of observing a range of outcomes that are continuous in nature. Most importantly, we can use formulas related to the normal distribution because the normal distribution is also a density curve on its own. For the next few videos in the series, we will mainly discuss the normal distribution while introducing many other formulas. If you found this video helpful, consider supporting us on Patreon to help us make more videos. You can also visit our website at simplelearningpro.com to get access to many study guides and practice questions. Thanks for watching.